Good morning. My name's Angela, if I haven't met you before. We are now going to read the Bible. And as we've been talking about, we're learning how to pray. So we're going to start with Jesus' words on this topic from the book of Matthew. Matthew 6, starting with verses 9 to 13. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And now verse 25. Therefore I tell you, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you be worrying? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or... What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And now chapter 7, starting at verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Thanks very much, Angela. Yeah, hi again, everyone. It's great to uh, have you here. My name's Garnet. If you missed that before, one of the pastors. Uh, we're up to, um, yeah, uh, talk number three on how to pray. Why don't we pray now and ask for God's help in this? Um, our Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. We thank you uh, that you're God of such mercy and such grace that you would send your Son for sinners such as us. Uh, thank you that in him that we are set free, we are redeemed, we are made your adopted kids um, and so that we can come to you boldly uh, as our father and we pray that you would do a work by your spirit in us uh, that we might know that you're you're a great God who we can fully trust Um, we pray this in Jesus name amen well I'm going to say something that will be controversial for some and here's my controversial statement and that is grocery shopping is amazing Please don't throw fruit and vegetables at me, okay? Uh, but, um, you know, stay with me on this. I, I know, um, I know um, you know, I'm only someone who ever does the fun shop. You know, I do the hunting for chocolate and for, you know, dessert when we have a, a craving. Um, I don't do the weekly gathering and I don't have to wrangle kids either. But think about it. Grocery shopping is amazing, You know, the glittering aisle of food 
uh, shelves just stacked, overflowing with, uh, with all sorts of food. The choices, you know, the deli here, the bakery over there, the frozen food over there. We just fill up our trolley with so many good things. I mean, let's face it, Mars bar ice cream. I mean, that is just a wonderful invention, right? But it's, you know, it's the assortment of things. Uh, this week, I dived into our own pantry to have a look, and these are the first things I picked up, and I didn't even try this, okay, but I picked up a, a can of beans from Italy, a bottle of olives from Spain, a container of peanut butter from Argentina, a curry paste from the Netherlands, that didn't, didn't expect that one, uh, a can of tuna packed in Thailand from various sources, sounded a bit ominous to me, uh, a can of corn from Australia. It said, proudly packed in Bathurst. Go Bathurst. You know, all that food grown, created, packaged, distributed from the four corners of the world, uh, lining the aisles of my local shops, ready to, for me to purchase just with a swipe of my card. I think grocery shopping is amazing. So, in this series, How to Pray, uh, Jesus teaching his disciples us how to pray, we come to the part where God shows us Yes, you know, we have modern conveniences, we have, we have wealth, we have choices, but we are much more frail and dependent than we realise. You know, when the food distribution chain goes a bit skewy and, you know, the, the aisles start looking a little bit bare, you know, it's then we freak out and we're reminded that we are more dependent than we think we are, but this is about how we really are dependent on God. Give us today our daily bread. That in relationship with God, our heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Saviour, we realise that every good thing comes from his hand. Uh, in fact, in Psalm 50, Psalm 50, there's a famous line that says, uh, the world is his and all that is in it. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You know, at the supermarket, we have meat in nicely packaged, cling-wrapped trays. Um, that meat actually comes from somewhere, people. Uh, those cattle on a thousand hills. But ultimately, it comes from God. The whole world is His and all that is in it. And this prayer of Jesus comes from, you know, it comes before, you know, it's pre-industrial, it's agrarian times, everyone was focused on the harvest and the rain and all of that, the fragility of food to gather for, you know, for their daily bread, will there be enough? So dependent, you know, our problem these days is we, we well, we eat too much, don't we? It's not our problem is that we eat too little, but this prayer is to bring us back to our dependence on God for all things, that we'd ask Him and depend upon Him. Now we're going to unpack this simple line, give us today our daily bread. But most important of all, this is the most important thing of all really, notice where it sits in this prayer. Uh, we've mentioned this before. It, it is a prayer of two parts. It's first focused on our God before getting anywhere near focusing on ourselves uh, you can even break it down some more. Um, Timothy Keller writes about this and he says there's first of all upward prayer, uh, adoration and praise, before outward prayer, seeking the things we need, and before inward prayer, things like confession. And like we mentioned last week, there's that helpful acronym for prayer. It's called ACTS, first adoration, then confession, then thanksgiving, then supplication, which is a fancy word for asking for things. But any way you slice it and dice it, there is a right precondition before coming to God and seeking things from Him. The right order is there from Jesus. It's adoration. It's praise. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, to have that sort of praise, that sort of plea coming from our heart as redeemed people of Jesus, that we would yet know again that God actually is our true food, our real wealth, our real happiness, that this comes first from our hearts and we turn that into words to God. Well, can you get the sense that if we start there, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, 
that we adore God and love Him and worship Him, well, can you get the sense that, you know, with the prayer list that we're about to bring Him, it's actually going to start changing. Uh, This is a how-to prayer series. It's supposed to be a bit practical. So I want to put it like this. I'm going to put it practically. It's natural for all of us to ask to ask wrongly. It it really is. It's natural for all of us to ask wrongly. To honor God with our prayer lists. uh, Sorry, to not honor God with our prayer lists. Uh, Like it says in the letter of James, you do not have because you do not ask. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Um, Isn't it true that our prayer list might be more about my will be done? God, this just has to happen for me when it should be your will be done? That in prayer we'd remember and acknowledge that God, it's God who's faithful and he's loving so that when we bring our desires, you know, God, give me a girlfriend, I'm lonely, or God, give me a new job, because I'm sick of what I'm doing. Oh, God, heal me. I don't want cancer. Oh, God, give me a, God, give me a baby. We want a family. And I don't lightly mention any of those things. But, you know, um, Christian author J.I. Packer wrote about this. And he said, all those desires are good. All those desires are fine. But when But when you remember and adore God for his love and faithfulness, you can explicitly tell God, it's this, this is the quote, that if he wills something different than what we are asking, we know it will be better. And it is that, rather than what we are asking, that we really want him to do. Think about that. To actually have that desire in your heart, that's huge. That's not an easy place to get to. That is not an easy place to get to at all. It can involve a lot, of, a lot of anguish, a lot of tears, wrestling with God in His love and faithfulness. But if we bring that desire, Father, may your will be done with the things you desperately want, well, your heart starts to change. So we're seeing there's a right order. Upward prayer. Upward prayer before outward prayer. Or first comes A in the ACTS acronym. I'm not saying you can never straight go to request. You can't ever straight go to uh, confession. You can. But it does mean in our overall prayer life, adoration must have prime place. It must have prime place. Let's spend time thinking and talking to God about who He is. Let's praise Him. Let's adore Him. Draw on His promises in the Bible. Start with His words to you and let that shape your words to Him. Now let's unpack this prayer a bit more. Give us this day our daily bread. Let's go to the last part, first of all. Daily bread. Just so we're clear on this. Uh, Some of you unfortunates might be gluten-free. Maybe you're thinking, this isn't for you. I don't want to eat cardboard every day. Um, But, you know, it's a metaphor for the necessities of life. Daily bread, daily rice, daily two-minute noodles if you're a student. Um, You know, I grew up daily meat and three veg. Um, It's about the necessities, not the luxuries. Which makes sense, doesn't it? If we first adore and praise God, it makes sense. We don't come with our arrogant, extravagant list, treating God like He's Santa Claus. It's not praying for our wants, but we come to our Heavenly Father with our needs. So it's food, and it's clothing, but it's really everything. It's anything and everything. Yeah, energy to do your daily work, wisdom to deal with an issue with your kids. It's confidence to handle a really stressful meeting coming up. Uh, You know, it's able to recall things for an exam. It's praying for our daily work. It's praying for emotional clarity and stability. It's praying for protection from injury and sickness. It's praying for the financial means to support yourself and your family. Daily bread means that there's nothing too small to ask of God. 
because there's nothing that's outside of his scope of care. The, Lord, you know, the world is his and everything in it. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But the Lord particularly provides for his kids. He particularly has this love for his kids, those, who've been, uh, those that have been made his, uh, adopted in, made um, so that they know him as his heavenly dad, saved uh, graciously by Jesus. Uh, that, so we should ask for daily bread. Well, let's, uh, let's say a bit more about bread. Uh, let's keep going here. Let's, let's go back to the start, though. It says, give us. Uh, notice the, notice the bold, bold statement of it, give. It's not please, pretty please. It's not groveling. It's certainly not, come on, pay up. You know, I've been good to you, so it's your turn to be good to me. This is not tit-for-tat religion. That's not true Christian faith. This is confident, bold, dependent prayer coming to our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not a, a perfect dad, but, but I've never been bothered when my kids come to me and asking for what they truly need. You know, any dad is there for their kids, aren't they? Or should be. You know, if one of my kids says, I'm 18 and I expect a car. Well, that would insult me. But if my son says, I need your help because I need to know how to drive and I don't. Well, that's dependence. That honors me. And in the other part of Jesus' teaching we read before, Matthew 7, verse 7, we see that Jesus commands us to ask and seek and knock. Our Heavenly Father gives good gifts. Our Heavenly Father wants to give us good gifts to those who ask Him. Now, we've had daily bread, we've had give. Here's the next part, it's give us. I mean, this is not a gimme prayer. Gimme, gimme. It's actually literally not a gimme prayer. It's not give me because it's give us, isn't it? And that fits with the rest of this prayer. It's always in the plural. Our Father, give us, forgive us. You know, the gift of God is salvation in Jesus. But when you trust in Him and you're adopted as His children, actually, you get blessing upon blessing after that as well. And with that, because you get all sorts of brothers and sisters in Christ. And yes, and yes sometimes we annoy each other. But in the power of the Holy Spirit, we're drawn to love each other. That means the Spirit draws us to pray for each other. Give, give us. You know, you think about people in this Christian family who are hurting right now. Sickness. Marriage breakdown. Some sort of trauma. Loneliness. Terrible things are playing out. Uh, sometimes we'll learn about these things on our email prayer net. Uh, where things are shared. I encourage you to get on to that. Uh, but there's plenty of things that also never get on prayer net, isn't it? You know, we also share things in growth groups. That's what's really good to be in a growth group. So we can pray for each other. See, this is not just a me prayer. It's an our, our prayer. We pray for each other. But again, our, our prayers and heart for each other is shaped by the first part of the prayer. We adore God. We pray that His name would be honored. We pray for each other that God would provide and heal. But also we pray for each other that we would humbly and gratefully live for Jesus as King and seek to obey Him and to submit to His rule and live under His will. So we thought about the daily bread, it's give, it's give us. Here's the next part, it's give us today. And this fits with give us today, our daily bread. But the fact that it's today comes back to, back to this daily dependence. You know, that we can go to a lovely supermarket and stock up our pantries and our freezers and go all Costco crazy and we can feel so sufficient and affluent and full. It doesn't help to remind us that we're dependent daily on the Lord, but, but we are. You know, as much as Costco wants us to think that you can have a year's worth of pasta sauce, in fact, we need to trust God every, every day. The fact that Jesus uses that term daily bread 
uh, I think has a connection with the time recorded in Exodus 16. In that moment where, in Exodus 16, Israel's on their way to the promised land, but they grumble and complain. So God provides them, not with a lifetime's worth of bread, but actually just enough bread or manna, just enough bread each day. Or in fact, enough, just enough bread to cover two days when it includes the Sabbath. But it was to teach the people, trust in God each day. He's there for you each day. He provides for you each day. Depend on Him. On this day, He will give you your daily bread. And in teaching us how to pray, not only makes us think of Exodus 16, but also actually, actually there's a proverb on this. Here's this proverb. It goes, keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. See how daily bread is connected with daily trust? Trust that God will give me enough so that I don't dishonor the name of God, either through thieving or pride. Just give me enough. Provide me with enough so that you, God, will answer my prayer. Hallowed be your name. To pray, give us today our daily bread. It's to connect with God that the relationship we have with him through Jesus is personal, it's intimate, it's intimate as we experience him in prayer, it's relationship. I'll put it like this, um, you know, I've never had guinea pigs. I don't know if any of you have ever kept guinea pigs. Uh, My brother used to keep guinea pigs with his kids. You know what a guinea pig does when they go on holiday? They just give them a container of water, an amount of food, and they say, there you go, fluffy. There's your mound of food, um, and just, um, you know, don't eat all at once, and we're off on holidays. Now, is that, what, is that what you want from your Heavenly Father? You know, a year's worth of food just sort of uh, slops it in your trough so you can work your way through it? Or would you rather want a meal prepared for you every day while well, this is our Heavenly Father? You know, to go to God with the request, give us today our daily bread, is also God give us this corrective to how much we worry. Um, The other passage we read before from Matthew 6 was all about worries and anxieties. Gives lots of reasons not to worry. One of them is verse 34 where it says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We're all prone to worry. We worry about that meeting. We worry about kids at school. We worry about getting them into a certain school. We worry about how to strike up a conversation. We worry about wrinkles. We worry about a new pain in my shoulder. We worry about that mole that's appeared on my husband's shoulder. We worry about enough money for retirement. We worry about, you know, you know, getting the dishwasher service because it's not working. We worry about our parents. We worry, you know, our days can be filled with worry. Uh, the other day, a friend of ours posted something and Kirsty mentioned, well, she could sort of relate to it, and it, and it goes like this. I'm so tired of worrying about everything for everyone every second of the day, but I'm also worried that nobody will worry as good as I do about all the things that need worrying about. Can anyone else relate to that? I think a whole bunch of us can. So, so Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble on its own. This is hard to do, isn't it? But it's this prayer that we can actually take some action and do something about it. Heavenly Father, give us today. Just give us today our daily bread. Give me your love and your grace for today's trials. You know, I can't live out the troubles of next Tuesday because I don't yet have your grace that's awaiting me for that day. So just on this day, I'm going to apply my faith and trust in you. Give me daily bread for today. To ask our Heavenly Father's provision each day is to bring our attention and focus and worries to the day that's just before us. It's to acknowledge that He's in control. It really is an exercise of faith. You know, I read the story um, about the end of the Korean War. This is in the 1950s. The Korean War, it, it was in South Korea. This is after the war when a large number of kids were orphaned uh, by, by the war. They, they were left all alone. They were left starving. And, and so relief agencies would come in and they'd set up orphanages. But, but a problem with these poor kids was at night they were restless, they were anxious, they would have trouble going to sleep. Uh, what they found out was that even though 
they now had for the first time in a long time, three meals a day. They just couldn't leave behind their anxiety that they wouldn't have food the next day. Uh, so to help them, in, in one particular orphanage, each night, they'd put a small piece of bread in each child's hand. It wasn't there to be eaten, it was actually to be held. It was to be like a little security blanket when you go to sleep. That they you know, they would be reminded each day they have what they need. And sure enough, that little, little piece of bread would calm them, help them to sleep, knowing that their physical needs would be met. It's pretty cool, isn't it? But let's come to God, our Heavenly Father, in prayer, asking for our daily bread, our needs to be met. But one last thing. We're talking about our daily bread. But I just want to say, surely, you know, when, God, uh, when Jesus is including everything in our daily bread, I don't think he's at all ruling out our spiritual food as well. All that we need to get through a day. And Jesus, who taught us to pray for bread, is the one who said of himself that he is the bread. He's the bread of life. He's the bread from heaven. For all those who feast on him will, will live forever. It's John chapter 6. When we pray that we, what we need, for what we need each day, our daily bread, also Christians want to say, give me Jesus. Give me more of Jesus. That I might get to know him and know his love and know that he's good enough and all the struggles I'll face today. Help me, God, to know that your love is sweet. Help me to know that your grace is sufficient despite all the things I want and crave. Even as we ask for various things when we have Jesus and really think about Jesus, I think our prayer list sort of changes. You know, there are things we want, but then we realize that in Jesus, we actually do have all that we need. And then we're brought back to that whole way that the prayer begins. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. And then give us today. Our daily bread. Um, here's today's how-to on prayer. Um, some things to think about. The precondition for our requests is praise and adoration. It's Acts. Or it's Timothy Keller's, you know, first upward prayer. Before outward prayer. Even before inward prayer. Now, asking for bread is asking for God's physical, relational, emotional provision. It's It's everything. We shouldn't hold back. Our Heavenly Father wants us to hear from us, even the small stuff. Pray for our needs, not our wants. A daily dependent prayer is a corrective against worrying for tomorrow. Uh, pray for Jesus, the bread of life, that His grace would be active in your life, that you would know He's enough, that you would know that He's more than you need, more than all the things that you want. So let's now come to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you so much for your love and mercy for us in Christ Jesus. Thank you for sending your Son. Uh, thank you for your extravagant love that was not about anything of uh, us reaching up to you. It was nothing about us making ourselves worthy of you. That this is not tit for tat. This is actually you showing your grace, just super abundant, amazing, overflowing, unconditional grace. Thank you for Jesus who died for us and he rose again. Um, hallowed be your name. You are holy, you are wonderful. Uh, Father, we, we, we say in faith that you are all that we need. And so, Father, we think of the things that, um, we think of those things in life that we continue need um, to um, do life each day, we ask for them. We ask for food. We ask for clothing. Uh, we ask for all those material needs. We ask for those things that we need to navigate um, relationships. Uh, we pray for um, all that we need to actually go on, go about your work in this world, to be about your kingdom and minister in your church. Uh, Father, but we thank you so much. Uh, for Jesus, the bread of life, all that he's done for us. And so we just so thank you that you're a God of provision, you're a God of care, you're our heavenly Father.
who gives good gifts to us. Uh, We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.